here, Chelsea here, Monarch Alley. I'm a vintage lover, thrifter, and part-time reseller. And today my video is about why you should resell and three tips to get started. If you are already a reseller, hang in there because this might remind you of some of the foundational processes of reselling and kind of remind you to get back to where you began. So what is reselling? Essentially reselling is taking something that you purchased and selling it elsewhere. For me, that means selling it on the internet. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Facebook Marketplace. Reselling can take on many forms. Some people don't even sell on the internet. Some people have an antique booth in a local antique mall. Other people just do garage sales every weekend at their homes. Um, it can look like a lot of different things, but essentially what we're doing here is taking items that we have and selling them, getting them to new homes. So why should you consider reselling? I think the most obvious first reason of why you should consider reselling is to have extra cash. For some people, it's survival money, you know, money to pay the bills, to pay their uh, rent or mortgage, stuff like that. For others, it's extra spending cash that can come in handy in a pinch um, to build up their emergency funds or extra spending cash during the holidays or for birthdays. Some people use it strictly for vacation travel money and some of those YouTube channels are really fun to follow because you get a glimpse at what could be and where you could go with reselling. Another great way to use this extra cash is investing and, and making your money work harder for you. Another really impactful reason of why reselling is great is that it helps to keep items out of landfills. Items that are donated to thrift shops like Goodwill are often left over at the end of the cycle and taken to a landfill. To help scoop some of these items out, resellers often go to thrift shops, find uh, some decent brands or unique styles, cool vintage items, and then get them to new homes, sell them on eBay or these other platforms I mentioned, and they can find loving homes and stay out of the landfills. And finally, why should you resell? Well, the community, uh, you know, it sounds super cheese ball, but like the community around reselling all the different sellers is really great. You can learn a lot from each other. I mean, hundreds and thousands of people just like me are making YouTube videos on the internet, teaching others how to do this. I mean, I don't think there are a lot of industries that give away their secrets in such a way. I think resellers are a special breed that just love the treasure hunt, they love the flip, and they love sharing that excitement with others. So yay, online friends. Now you know why to resell, so I wanna share some tips on how to get started. My first tip is to start your inventory with what you already have around your house. I highly recommend checking your personal closet, going through the kitchen cupboards, try to find 10, 20, or more items that you can get started with listing. If you are a minimalist and there's absolutely nothing in your house that you have to sell or that you want to sell, then my next piece of advice would be to reach out to your friends and family. Free inventory is a great, great way to get started without losing any kind of personal investment. So if you start with free items, either from your home or from friends or family, then that gives you an opportunity to learn more about brands, learn more about the listing process and learn what's more effective. Now, when you're starting with this free inventory, don't undervalue it. Sometimes when I go to list something that's from my personal closet, I remember the, you know, many, many times that I've worn that piece and I think, oh, I should just sell this for $8 and like move on with my life. But really, if it's a nice sweater that could probably go for 20. And so I need to remember, and you need to remember too, to not undervalue your personal items just because you know their history. Step two is to prepare for growth, set yourself up for success and manifest it. This absolutely starts with proper storage and some kind of an inventory system. I think a lot of us start off small and don't anticipate how quickly it is that we can grow our inventory and suddenly you have clothing all over your house and when something sells, you don't know where to find it. So from the beginning, <laughs> learn from all our mistakes, learn from my personal mistakes too. From the beginning, start with some kind of an inventory system. You know, for me in the two years that I've been doing this, what works is a category inventory system, but eventually I could grow out of that. I currently have about 300 pieces in my inventory and my denim bin is getting a little difficult to sort through. So what I could do is shift to assigning each piece an inventory number. And when I put it away, put it in the box marked A, put it in the box marked B. Um, that's a very common practice for a lot of resellers. But like I said, what I do is I have a bin for women's tops and a bin for men's tops. And I know exactly where to go when one of those items sells. So when you get started, don't just throw all those items in a corner because they also could get damaged if they're not properly stored. I highly recommend getting a bin or having a special spot in your closet to put all of your inventory so it's very easy to find. Another thing to consider when preparing for growth is supplies. Again, you don't wanna run into a sticky situation when an item sells, you get so excited, you can't find it, or you find it, but you don't have the proper supplies to ship it. 
Without the proper supplies, your shipping can be delayed, the customer could get frustrated, or the different platforms have different algorithms. If they notice you're not shipping right away, there could be trouble. So another way when getting started to build up your supplies is to ask friends and family. Guys, don't be embarrassed to say, hey, I'm selling stuff on eBay, do you have any boxes? I have saved so much cash on shipping supplies by asking friends and family for their leftover bubble wrap, boxes, and poly mailers. If you're unfamiliar, a poly mailer is just one of those kind of plastic shipping bags that you see all the time. And don't be deterred or scared of shipping. You will figure it out so quickly and there are a ton of YouTube videos dedicated to shipping as well. My last tip is to do your research. I was on maternity leave when I started reselling, which is crazy town. I was taking my newborn to the thrift shops. Hey, we needed to get out of the house, right? Uh, <laughs> but we were going to the thrift shops, picking up merchandise. And then when I would be at home with him, I was watching YouTube videos and learning about what brands are selling, um, different tactics to utilize the platforms best and how to ship. So what I would recommend is watching a lot of YouTube, like my channel. <laughs> but um, I don't think you need to start off by buying a course or anything like that, although they are available. What you need to do is just find some trusted resellers on YouTube, get some tips, and then try things out for yourself. Another part of doing the research is looking up comps. Comps are comparables where you look up the item that you're considering selling to find out what it's currently being priced at in the market or what it recently sold at. Finding out what items are currently priced at and what they're selling at will really help you in the long run. It'll help you to price your item comparable to the market so that you don't undervalue or overvalue your item. It can also help you decide if you need to be picking up that item at the thrift shop. One fun thing about looking up comps is when you find a surprisingly valuable item by looking up a brand that you didn't know about. There are like literally hundreds of items that I picked up not really knowing if I should or not, but then as soon as I typed in the brand name and did not look at the retail value, but looked at the resale value, I was shocked and surprised at how, how valuable it was and how well it was selling. Looking at the comps also helps you find different keywords and ways to describe the item so that it might sell a little bit faster. So how can you look up comps? Well, there are a lot of different ways. eBay is one of my favorite ways to look up comps because you can do an image search, a barcode search, or it's just very easy to type in keywords and quickly find the solds. An image search is especially useful with hard goods and toys as it can help you quickly identify a character or TV show or even the brand of item. You can look up labels, you can look up the item itself. All you have to do is hit the camera in eBay and then take a picture of the item that you're considering. The barcode search is great too, because sometimes when I'm out sourcing, I find a new tags item and I can just quickly scan the barcode and it literally knows exactly what item I'm talking about most of the time. Other search engines have a barcode search as well. So you can even look on different platforms and different search engines to make sure you're getting a well-rounded view of the comparables. If the item doesn't have a barcode and it's too generic for an image search, just type in some keywords. If the item has a specific brand, type that in, for example, Gap Denim Jacket Women's or something like that. Use some of the keywords that you would use when listing it to look up a search. You can then find a general idea of what the comps are for that item. Like I mentioned earlier, always make sure to look at what's currently being listed and the solds. It's also a good idea to look at how many are currently listed and how many have recently sold. If there are a ton of that item listed and only one or two have sold, then it might not be the best item to pick up or it might be what's called a long tail item, something you're going to sit on a while. All right, friends, there you have it. That's why you should resell and three tips to get started. I hope that you found this video valuable to you. If you are currently a reseller and you have some advice, drop them in the comments below so we can all learn and grow from each other. And if you're new here, I really hope you found it valuable. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I also have my contact information in the description with how you can reach me on Instagram, my email, or just like I said, drop a comment here. And I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel because I will continue putting out helpful videos like this. I also love putting out thrift hauls and what sold videos. Personally, when doing my research, what solds are the best way for me to learn what's currently selling now. I have an entire playlist dedicated to it. So feel free to throw that on and get some work done today. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.